Hello there, Aku here again. Welcome to episode 18 of my Feed the Beast Ultimate Beginner's Guide. Yesterday we finished off looking at a bit of bee stuff. I'm going to get back to that in a minute. I'm just going to run through what I've done off camera. I've um, I've tidied this place a bit. I'm going to keep this place as my, my magic area, thorncraft and stuff like that. And I'll move all the industrial stuff across to the other place as we go along. One of the things I want to get on with is moving my basic ore processing across there. And for that we need to kind of expand our... We need to expand our... Um, redstone conduits over there so that the boilers feed in everything everything that needs feeding i have just changed this to steps uh, to ladders instead of stairs down there and yeah, what else have i done not much else here but i've tidied this place up a bit i've added a bit more to the new place so we've got some stairs just make getting up and down a bit easier and i've started building the upstairs so this is gonna be our main processing area it's pretty small but i think it'll be all right we can always move somewhere bigger, or we can always build more floors on, but for now it's going to do. And there, I just made it look a little bit, I mean, I've not done anything awesome with the aesthetics, but I made it look kind of tidy, so there we go. little place with no roof, I'll do for now. Uh, I'll keep, leave that turned on, just making sure my light coverage was good downstairs when I put the stairs in. So, this is fully up to temperature now, 500 degrees, I apologise for sniffing there, I've got a bit of a cold, my, my little nephew was giving everyone in the house a cold, so... Um, where everyone's sniffing. Um, that's fully up to temperature, so it does, it does go to 500 on a low pressure. Uh, the high pressure goes to 1000. Um, and if you look in there, that's going up now. That was 10,500 yesterday, so we're actually producing more wood than we need. So that's good and safe, we know that's good. And I've got the engines turned off at the minute, and I've got plenty of power in there, but it is getting used. So at some point, what we need to do is wire these motors engines up so that they go to the redstone energy cell probably up there somewhere and we'll start branching out so we can get power upstairs and power down here and stuff like that but for now i want to go back to the other place and just carry on with bees a little bit so last time we i should, I should have actually stayed there uh, last time we put some stuff into this centrifuge and i had some silky combs from some tropical bees that i'd got from the from the village put a silky comb in there you get this stuff silky propolis now i said before you get propolis from squeezing normal honey we can also get it from tropical bees we're in a tropical biome i probably should get some tropical bees on the go to get this going you don't have to do this but what you can do you put the silky propolis back in there and you get a chance of getting normal propolis it's not a great chance as you see so we don't actually got anything from that so it's not great but you can get propolis that way as well so i just thought it'd be worth mentioning so because yeah we are in a mini jungle we could move one of our one of our apiaries up here into the jungle area and um and create some silky propolis that way using tropical bees but we're not gonna do that not gonna do that for now so what we have got if you remember we've got forest and forest in here and what we want to do is we want to start trying to create some common bees so what we need to do is switch one of the forests for a different mundane bee. My mundane bees are from hives. This is a hive. They're scattered all over the world. What I like to do is the basic, the most basic combination is forest and meadows. This is not a meadows. Let's we'll see what this is. I think it's a marble. It is. This is a marble. So this is from extra bees. It's a marble princess. I don't often use marbled, but um, you can use them. What I like to use is two of the vanilla bees, forestry and sorry, forest and meadows and I had a little scout around got myself some meadows bees so what I'm going to do is we're going to put that into the air period there but we're not going to have a great chance of mutating because we've got no modifiers in there and that's the next thing I'm going to talk about so we're going to try it like this so what we're going to do is we're going to put that in there and then next time this queen dies the princess the queen will die it'll give some princesses and it'll give her a princess and some drones the princess will go back in here and that'll come back with that meadows drone and we'll see what that gives us so we're going to keep an eye on that because we don't you don't really want it automated when you're when you're breeding it's um because you want to see what results you get so i'm gonna leave it automated for now let's get rid of that i could put it in there but have i got another forestry i keep saying forestry i mean forest we've got another forest princess we haven't no we've only got one we've got we could go that way in fact let's do that Let's do that. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to use this other apiary here. I'm going to mix this with a meadows and a forest. So it doesn't matter which order they go in, as long as you've got two in there. 
And I've put that in there for now. And when that dies, this will keep producing. Just uh, normal ones for us. See, it's all very slow until you get automated later. But, um, there we go. Now that still says Meadow. And it will do until that queen dies. The Whatever it says in there is what the princess was. So even though that's combined with a forest, it doesn't say forest on there. It won't, it won't do until it dies. So when it dies, there'll be a princess and some drones in here, and there could be meadows, there could be forest, or there could be common, or there could be hybrids. So we'll see what we get. That's basically all there is to start with. What we need to do, though, is we can increase this by putting things in here called soul frames. Now, there's different types of frames. The basic ones are... The basic ones are standard frame, impregnated frame, soul frame, and proven frame. Now, basic is just sticks and uh, string. Impregnated is sticks that have been put through a thing with seed oil. Put through a carpenter with seed oil. Um, so you put, like we've got a carpenter at the other place with water in it. You need a carpenter with seed oil. So we're going to start doing that because we're going we're gonna to need that. The soul frames are made using the impregnated frames and soul sand. So if you look in here, we've got a carpenter. This one's got water in it. Or well, this one had water in it because we put buckets of water in. What we need is one of these with seed oil in. And if we get some wood, take a stack of wood there. There's two patterns that we're going to be using. One of them is just two bits of wood, like so. If we had seed oil in there, that shows up as impregnated sticks, and that's that producing impregnated sticks for us. So one of the things we want to do early on, to increase our our mutation chance, is start getting some seeds. Now we've got a few seeds. We've got um, henequin seeds there. I think we use quite a few. We've got some seed there, normal seeds. That's wheat. We've got some flax and stuff. One of the best things though is melon. If you look at melon. Each melon gives melon seeds, so we've got 64 melon seeds there. Squeezing seeds, you don't get much at all. Let's have a look what they go into. You'll see that we can squeeze them into seed oil. Squeeze it, and it gets 0 0.2 of a bucket. So, that's that 50. You need 50 seeds to get one bucket's worth. So, not much at all. So, we need a good, we need a good seed production. So that is what we're going to do, because it's really easy to set up if you've got red power. What we need is our block breaker that we use. Remember we used that to get obsidian before. Now what we can do is we can make a real little simple system. We've got some timers still, which is good. We used them initially when I had the, the wood transportation set up over there. We had them timers in there, but we don't need them anymore. So we've got a couple of spare timers in the chest there. Um, just to remind you how you make them. It's that stone wafer and stuff. What else do we need? We're going to need a bit of tubing. We've got any tube? I don't think I have. I thought I'd made some. And maybe I've made some and I maybe used it all. So this stuff uses a different type of tubing. This is a buildcraft tubing. Piping, did I say? But this is red power. So that needs red power piping. And that uses brass. What we need is... Three bits of copper, one bit of tin. Very much like the bronze recipe that I showed yesterday. Now, if we put that in there, that's going to get us bronze in it. Make sure I don't get myself confused like I did yesterday. Uh, copper, what am I doing? Easiest way. Let's just turn any eye back on. Look at brass. There's our brass ingots. And alloy furnace, that's the simplest way. Can it go in an inductive smelt there? It can if you use a blend. And it can if you use zinc instead of tin. Okay, that's what I was missing. Right. So, for this, this is red power. So we use our... Oops, forgot about them. We use our blue electric alloy furnace. So three copper, one tin. Gets us brass ingots. Thank you very much. And I'll just put that... Where can they go? Silicon wafers can go in there for now. So combine that with a bit of glass. Just straight old one of the mill glass. Get us some pneumatic tubes. And what we could do is we can just have that running against that, so that should be fine. So now all we need is a chest. Got some chests in here. I've used them all. Looks like I've used them all. Not like I'm short of wood though, is it? So let's just make a chest. 
There we go. And this is a really simple setup. What we're going to do is we're going to sleep so we don't blow up. And then once we've slept, we're going to start doing a really little basic seed automation system on our melon down there. Now, this won't get as much because it's just one melon. But um, it's going to get us something, which is alright. This is a really ghetto setup. Which is really is the most basic, um, probably the most basic automation you can get for seed production. There's much, there's, there's a lot of other ways of doing it, which I can show you later. But for now, this is going to work. So as long as it works, that's all that really matters. And what we can do is actually um, move that to there. So all we need here is. We need a pipe running from the block breaker to the chest. Easy enough. Then we need a timer on the block breaker. So I'm just going to grab a bit of dirt. Like so. And put that there. Now I time it. So I'll put that there. And then I'll put it to 10 seconds. And then every 10 seconds it's going to see if there's a melon there and what I need to do as well is just make sure that the melon can only grow there let's um let's not wreck the place let's grab a bit of dirt so this just remember this is just temporary this is just so we're getting a little bit of seeds so what we want to do is we want to limit the places where that melon can grow that melon can only grow there now so that melon will, whenever it grows it'll grow there and whenever it grows it'll get captured by that and very very basic um, melon production there it is we could put a fabricator here and get that to automatically change it into seeds so that's always good well and of course we can expand this by any more block breakers making it a little bit more advanced if you look at my main let's play series this is a similar setup to what i've got there but i've got um i think 16 block breakers and i'm using stuff called zyke um, some Zycraft soil that makes things grow quicker. So this is really basic setup of what can be expanded. So that's not going to grow while we're watching it probably, but that's going to get us some seeds coming in. So that leads us on. We should make our next forestry machine, which is going to need more bronze, and we'll do bronze the correct way this time of year. So is it three of them for each one of them? So we want. Um, see, there's two each. Should be four in there yet. So I want two more. One, two. Put that back. Anything else to process? A little bit of copper, a little bit of tin. So we've got some stuff in here that I've been slowly processing. That can all go in there. Oh, we already had some brass. My bad. Always check your ingot chest before you make more stuff. <laughs> um, right, I don't know why I got them levers out of my bag. I thought I was going to need them, but I clearly did not. So, another one of these steady casings. And now, the thing we're making now is we've got a, we've got a carpenter. We've got a centrifuge. The third thing we need for bees is a squeezer. So that uses the impregnated casing, that, the, sorry, the sturdy casing that I've just made. And this time, it said before, you see it was copper and bronze, now it's tin. So they're all pretty much exactly the same, just got a different type of ingot on the outside. And two bits of glass. There we go, squeeze it. So now what we can do is we can take that back to our other place. We're going to want some liquid ducts. Uh, I'll take them all just in case. I'm going to need them. I mean, one of them levers I've just put back in my bag. I must have known I was going to need one. So, again, very, very much a cowboy setup here. Um, how do we want to do this? I should start actually putting pipe through there and doing this properly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the camera. I'm going to make some more of these liquid up. Uh, these red, red power. Uh, these redstone energy conduits and run some upstairs so we've got a nice little power line on the side of this god damn it 
<laughs> these power line along the side of here so we can start setting machines up properly. That'll be a much better idea. Back in a bit. I'm back again, just making some redstone energy conduits. And here you see the beauty of the redstone energy cell. I just pinched the energy cell from the other place. We've got plenty of wood so that it's not going to run out. And I'm just going to fill this up with energy. This will be coming across to the other place pretty soon anyway. But in fact, I'm going to put that up to 100. So fill as quick as possible. There we go. I'm just going to fill this up here for now. And then next time this is drained, I'll probably move it across. But no rush getting that over there. There we go, so that's finished and it's full. That'll last us a good while. And I'll do the same here. Just fill that up nice and quick. And now we can just jump back, put our cell back, and all the pipes remember where, where they were set to. And I'll turn the motors back on, fill that back up. Wonderful, right back when I've laid this down. And we're back, and this is looking a little bit tidier down here. What I've got is my redstone energy cell just on the wall over there. I am going to have that to disabled. You don't always have to do that, but sometimes it's a good practice, I think, to, to do that. I, th I think it should be like that by default myself, disabled. It's good practice to do that because sometimes if you are getting a high signal to it, by, by which I mean any kind of red, redstone signal like this, if this was putting out a redstone signal, it's not, but if it was, and it was near that, it could inadvertently mess with it. So it's just yeah, good practice, I think, to put it to disabled. And then if you actually explicitly want it to respond to either a low or a high redstone signal, then say it as such. But what we've got is our redstone energy, energy cell there, and I've just run a line of conduit upstairs. Quite nice. It gives us a nice clean area to work with. This is still a little bit messy down here. I probably will tidy this up at some point. But for now, that's working fine. That's all good. So if we go upstairs, and I'll probably fall off here again because I keep falling off it. Oh, I managed to get up. So here, what we can do up here is we can set our machines nice and tidy. We've got room for our uh, all processing machines along here. We can extend this along here if we want. Um, I brought these up here, the blue electric stuff. What I've done is I've just, nice and simple, swapped the wall blocks for the batteries and put the solar panels out here. So that gets us them nice in the corner, out of the way. And one other thing that I should mention, that I never mentioned before, is this stuff, basalt, when you break it, it turns into basalt cobble. Now basalt cobble, you have to cook to make it back into basalt again. So if we put that in our furnace there, you'll see that that'll cook. It'll become this stuff, basalt. And that's the same smooth stuff as you can see out there. And then what you can do, same as stone bricks, Put it in a square pattern, you can make basalt bricks. That's where all these bricks have come from, if you was wondering. I never mentioned that when I made them. It's pretty straightforward. This is added by Red Power, so basalt's only in the game if you've got Red Power. Uh, it's a nice looking brick. It's, the smooth stuff looks nice, and the, um, the bricks look quite nice as well. And I think the contrast with stone bricks is quite nice. So that's why I've been using them. This at some point will probably get changed for the Zycraft floor, though, like I mentioned last episode, just because mobs can't spawn in it. So I've taken my hopper from above the stirring engine into the place. And we probably won't need it there yet because this can hold quite a lot of seeds. And I've, I'm in another hopper. That one's going to be for the centrifuge. That can only hold one stack of stuff. So once we start getting bee products, we're going to want to be able to process them. So I've just done that nice and simple for now. And I should probably move that off one. Let's, let's be a bit more space conscious. Let's put that there. So this is our little big setup, and the only other thing we're going to need um, is we're going to, have to want to connect the output of this to the input of that, so it's got seed oil in there. So what we need is a couple of liquid ducts. They can go on the front like so, and give that signal. Sorry, give that a wrench, so it's the arrow and then all we need to do is I think I'm actually going to put an all in the floor there and just connect that to the side there so now if we just pick that bit of basalt up wherever it went have I got it I may have got it now if we go get our seeds you should see did I leave them in here where did I put them 
64 seeds and we'll use these up as well um, I'll keep the pumpkin seeds we can use all the rest of these seeds just get rid of them keep things tidy I'll keep cocoa yep that's good let's jump back through here and so they I don't really need the hopper yet it's a bit of a bit of overkill getting the hopper but there we go this will start squeezing seeds seed oil is going to get transported into here so you see that's got seed oil in it so now if we there we go because it's got seed oil in it it recognizes the fact that it's got seed oil in so it shows you the pattern and now we'll make an impregnated sticks which is what we wanted so while we make a few of them this is going to be slow I'm just going to, go, going to show you one other type of bee that's quite important very interesting and I found one in my hollow hill if you look underground we found things called rocky bees now if we come out here there, there's a underground hive if anywhere that's underground you see bees they're going to be rockies so if we break that there we go rocky drone rocky princess now these aren't that good on their own they don't produce any special products or anything but what they are they're a really good base bee to breed from so if you look we'll just analyze that princess there if you look on this second screen they've got all these yeses they've got good temperature and humidity tolerance i generally try and run in a normal normal biome but you could live it's it can go up or down either way so the most you need to go up is five it's it's there's there's three humidity types and there's five temperature types that goes from um the coldest is like wintry biomes and the hottest is like deserts or the end um, or the nether and then humidity normal biomes are normal and you get damp biomes that are like uh, swamps and you get dry biomes that are like deserts so plus or minus two will get you anywhere you can live anywhere with that plus or minus two don't quite get you anywhere for that but plus or minus five which you can do i'll show you one day you can get that to plus or minus five and that'll let your bees live anywhere but what we can do if you use these later on when we get things called serums we can put species onto these use these as your stock bee because they've got all that they can work at night they can work in the rain that's what flyer means and they can work underground so they don't need direct sunlight so very good rocky bees are very good so you want to any rocky bees you get you want to save um i always look in that chest every time i go by it so for now we're just going to save them i'm just going to put them in there and we can ignore them for the time being but i was going to show you one so let's put our scoop back we can put that bit of basalt back in there and let's go see if our bees have mutated i don't like the look of that creeper or oh, that one or oh, this guy his gold armor good damn it well that armor's not helping is it he die for god's sake oh, look at that now he's still on me crops the son of a they're still out growing must be the trees oh, there was another creeper but looks like he's despawned so okay we're safe out here we're safe right so this one will just carry on yeah and then this one what we've got there is a common princess that's good that's what we was after so let's use our BLRZ common cultivated that's interesting so cultivated the next line on so one of the the bee that we're using there could not have been pure uh, we've run out of honey let's grab a bit more honey I think I put some in one of these chests I'll just squeeze it I did there we go 49 honey drops so that's a meadows common so common cultivated that's a forest meadows so now we're starting to breed we're getting the cultivator is the next step on so i didn't check that bead that i pulled out of here before i put it in there the one that i pulled out which was i believe a forest i put it with a meadows princess there was a forest drone the forest drone i pulled out must have been a hybrid so i should have checked that before i put it in really but what we can do now we've got a common there we've also got a common from before that we managed to get that's a common forest that's a common cultivated and um, what i'm going to do is i'm going to breed them two together and see what they give us so you see the the mutation rate's pretty high we could make it higher with these frames that we're going to make but it's not essential you can get away without having it so common common um 
that should give us a good chance of getting possibly a pure common. So the way this works, if you ever, if you want to actually know it works properly, I kind of do it brute force. Um, I never really fully understood it, so I just keep throwing things in until I get the bee that I want. Until I can get to the point where I can do the genetic machine from extra bees, which makes it a lot easier, and then I just do that to pull serums out. So I kind of do it not through properly understanding how to do it, but just by brute force, which you can do. Or if you want to learn how to properly do it, it uses Mendelian genetics. And the best person to see, if you want to learn how to do it properly, is on YouTube, put in Floristar, search for Floristar channel, and watch their series called Bee University. And that will show you all how it all works properly, rather than just doing it like I do. So, that's a common, that was a hybrid and a hybrid. So, the, we should get the most chance of getting a common out of that, as far as I understand it. But, we might not, we might get something else completely. Um, we shouldn't go back to forest. There's a chance it'll go to a pure cultivated, but I think the the biggest chance we're going to get there is a pure common, I think. Not sure. We'll see what comes from it. But what we can do is, because we've got seed oil, we can grab some string. Really important use of string. Don't know why I took all them out there with me, just to bring them back in again. And we can go back to our base. Throw some more seeds in there. See, it's still using all these seeds. Getting through them. And we've got 42 of them sticks. That's quite nice. So let's... 32 of them. What we can do with that is... So sticks in a circle. String in the middle. Gets us these impregnated frames. They're very good. They speed up your bees. They speed up the production of your bees. But... With apiaries, they cannot be automated. So that's something you need to know. You can do these, but it's all manual. That's on purpose. If you want to automate it, you've got to move up to the next step of bee house, which is called the alveary, which we will be heading towards. Alvearies are very good. But what we can do for now is... I'm still, I'm still on that again. Fool. Fool. Um, what we can do with it, we could put apiaries in there and they'd speed up the production of these but these aren't particularly good producing bees. I'm going to wait until we get cultivated because cultivated produce nice and fast. What we are going to do is we're going to combine these with some soil sand, get us these soil frames and what they do is they increase the mutation chance by 50% each. So the base chance of these is probably quite high anyway, it's probably 10%. Um, what this will do is each one of them will add another 5% on. I should get to 25% if my maths is right. My math might not be right. <laughs> it's often wrong. But there we go. We've got a good chance of getting that to either become a pure common or there's a small chance of it coming a cultivated. And there's a really small chance of it, I think, a really small chance of it reverting to a foreign. No, there won't be. It's either going to be a common or a cultivated or some kind of common cultivated hybrid. So there we go. Excellent. So I'm going to cut a little bit, and I'm going to get a couple of things ready, and now we can actually start moving on to, I'm going to leave that for now, come back to that at the end of the episode, see what we've got, but I'm going to start setting up my actual proper cow farm. So I'm going to cut the camera, get a few things ready, and start making a manufacturer reloaded cow farm, back in a bit. And we're back, and I've got some stuff ready to make some interesting stuff, let's say... Uh, See, right, for a cow farm, first of all, we're going to need to feed the cow farm. So, the first thing we're going to do is actually not make a cow farm at all. We're going to make an automated wheat farm. So for that, you see we've got loads of stuff in here. The thing we need for that, is, this is all an interconnected setup we're going to be making here. It's going to produce wheat, it's going to produce cows, it's going to kill the cows, which is going to give us leather and steak. It's going to take sewage from the cows, which we can produce into fertilizer which will feed the wheat farm um, it's going to produce sludge from the wheat farm that we can turn into dirt and soil sand so it's 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 all very interconnected so you need to put quite a few machines to get it started the first thing we need is a wheat farm now all farms are the same in this the fact that they need the basic is they need two items they need a 
planter that goes under the floor and then you need a harvester that cuts the wheat down when it's grown. You can also make a fertilizer which when you put fertilizer in there it grows things instantly like, like bone meal. If you've uh, used bone meal I'm pretty sure you've seen me use bone meal. So the first bit is to make a farm and as like I say you can do this for all sorts of farms. You can do it for wheat, um, trees, flax, all kinds, just whatever, just what every plant I think there is. So the first one we need is a thing called a planter. That's there. So that's made some bits for that. Piston, two flower pots. Flower pots are really easy. They're just three bricks. And bricks, if you remember, are cooked clay. And then, like all the ma the manufacturing machines, plastic sheets and a machine factory block. So a planter, and then next thing is a harvester, golden axe, and two sets of shears. Right, that's a bit weird, isn't it? So shears are just iron. Like so, and a golden axe is just like any kind of axe. In fact, it has two sticks and three bits of what are we making the axe out of. There we go. They can go there, and then again, three of them, one of them gives us a harvester. And we don't really need the the, the um, fertilizer yet, so I'm not going to make the fertilizer just yet. I'll show you it. Fertilizer, there it is. There's leather. We haven't actually got any leather, so that's probably the reason why I ain't going to do it just yet. But I can put that back for now, and I need a carrot in a minute. So that's the basic one. And these things, when you place them, if you look, the, the new version of these, so depending on what version, if you're playing 1.0.2, same as me, you can upgrade these. So let's have a look at upgrade. There you see, there's all different upgrades, and each upgrade increases the radius, so you can make a really big farm if you've got the materials to spend. Should we use three emeralds and have a massive farm? Why not? The only other thing we'll have to sort out is, we'll have to work out how to power this. So, yes, I'm going to use an emeralds. I'm going to use some emeralds. I've got three there. Why the hell not? Let's see what this is like. So the worst that could happen. So what was that again? Three plastic, two redstone, and a gold nugget. We've got... Uh, got no plastic. Okay, let's cook some plastic up. Plastic is just rubber. Put in there. And this is going to be a huge farm. And I'm probably not going to get to it this episode, but the start of the next episode, I'm going to create... I'll, I'll decide I'm either going to run conduit to the farm. That's one option. Or the other option is... Don't run conduit to it and use a thing called an energy tesseract. I think for now I'm going to run conduit to it. It's a bit cheaper. Um, is that too big? Am I going to have it a bit carried away there? It's 3x3 three three standard. This is radius. So let's let's make it 15x15. 15 15. So we want um, 6. Yeah, we want an extra 6 radius. So let's go to 6 one, which is a silver upgrade. That'll make it to a 15 by 15 farm. That's big enough. We don't want to go nuts. We don't want to go nuts. Uh, I'm going to put my emeralds back. So close to getting eaten. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Plop. They were so close to getting eaten then. Uh, three silver. Much more sensible. And I think I've got a gold nugget somewhere. I have. And that plastic should be sorted now. It is. There we go. We've got an upgrade. And of course, because we've got a harvester, we need to upgrade to the harvester as well. Idiot. So let's double everything we've got there. Um, three more silver, you know that's a different type. That'll be fine. Two more of them, and we're going to need some, we're going to need a gold nugget, so let's break one of these down. We're going to need that for something else as well. So there's one. So of course, if we had the fertilizer, we need one for that as well. But as it is, there we go. Silver upgrades. Let's go back and where did I put it? There it is. Grab that thing. I suppose the simplest way of doing this would be to place them next to where I've got power, and then run the power out to where they need to go. So I'm going to cut the camera again. And just work out where I can put these. I'm probably going to clear a bit of that land there. I'll just plant some dirt. Yeah, in fact, I'll do that. I'll plant some dirt there. 
this truck next to us is going to be a big wheat farm. So back in a bit. And back again, and the video is getting a bit long. It's about 35 minutes, I think. So we need to get on with this, and I'll be finishing for this episode. So what I've done is I've laid out a 15 by 15 area here. Our planter is going to go down there. It goes one layer underneath the the um, dirt, and our harvester is going to go over here. Now. Let's make sure that's not the boiler there. That's good, that's good. Right, what we'll end up with probably is a, either a liquid pipe or some, something else there. Because this thing, if, you, if we place it there, you see, it's got a tube that comes out the back. That's where sludge comes out, and we're going to be using the sludge. So, I'm kind of making this a little bit compact, but it'll be alright, it'll be alright. So, just turn that wrong with the Omni wrench. That wants to be facing that way. And, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. Sorry about that, just cut the mic while I sneezed. Um, so what we need to do now is... What's the best way of doing this then? Um, we're going to power... Yeah, get my shovel back. Might not have enough conduit here actually. So, I've got 15 more conduit, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Um, that's messy, don't want that. I always have my Omni wrench and my shovel share the same slot and it gets uh, quite retained. One, see look, I'm trying to bloody. Oh, well, there goes a shovel anyway, so it looks like I'm using the Omni wrench. And the other thing I'm going to need for this is we we'll have to get seeds back into the planter. So at some point I'm going to have to have it through use of a item tesseract or some kind of piping. Look at that, perfect. So that one's wrenching, so it's got power. These have both got power now. Excellent. So what we need to do is we need to get seeds into there. So start the next episode, I'll be doing that. But for now, what we can do is we can cover that up and that. And at some point in the future, once we start getting fertilizer produced, we can also add on fertilizer to this so that we can grow stuff quicker should we need to. So I'm leaving that bit of thing there so we can get some liquid conduits or we can get something, maybe a liquid tesseract to send that to a sludge boiler. Oh, we could even put a sludge boiler right there, put it into a tank. I don't know if they're attached directly, I don't know if they need pipes in between. That's something we can find out together. Um, what do I need then? I need, my, I need them putting in for a start. I need some wheat seeds, which I don't really have any of because I've squeezed them all. So let's bash this, try and get a few seeds. We're not going to have nowhere near enough seeds here, but I'll do some sorting out off camera, I'll pipe it up, and so we need, what we need is a little kind of loop that puts seeds back in there, and then if that's, not, if that's full, the seeds are going to want to come to be using our bioreactor. So let's run it on like a bit of a nutter. Um, I should have repaired all that before. Eh, I can do that off camera. I'm sure I'll just get, get it sorted. Can I even reach down there? No. Right, I'll do that off camera. Don't want to waste your time. So what we can do is jump over there. Come on. We want our radius upgrade in there and our radius upgrade in there. So they're just going there. So six, seven, eight, nine. This should be 15 by 15. I should have worked this out right. Now if we put our seeds in there, you see it started planting. Um don't like it start over here. Because I haven't got much seeds, I haven't really done much yet. So I'm gonna call this an episode there. Uh, I'm going to tie this up and I'll show you how I've re I'm going to do the seed routing next time. And we're going to need a, need a chest on there to capture the seed, the wheat that it gets. This is close to being an automated system. And the first in our manufacturing loaded set of farms, we end up with cows, sheep, um, all kind of stuff. So 
as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope it was enjoyable and um, a little bit educational. I hope you learnt something. If you didn't, I'm not doing it right. And I hope you join me next time. Cheers. Bye. Oops, a couple more things. Need to up the radius on the chunk loader so that it actually covers that chunk. So things keep growing while I'm not here. And I need to, really quick, let's just check in our B. See what we got. We need a B layer there, but that will be. Let's jump down here. And what have we got? What have we got? Get off me. We've got common princess and cultivated drones. Let's see if any of these are pure. A common diligent, that's the next step again, we didn't want that just yet. Because we need to get cultivated diligent, interesting. And cultivated common. Okay, um I'm gonna go with the common diligent for the cultivated common. I don't want it to go diligent. I'm hoping that that'll go back to common, but it might go cultivated. Um I should have really checked the stats of that a little bit first, but Although diligence better in the land, we actually want to get a good source of common and cultivated first. So I don't want to overbreed these just yet, but we've got some, we're getting some good bees. Okay, and I'm going again. Cheers, bye.